things in this world. Things that no one should have to experience. And it is my job to make them right. I want your help. Officer down! Officer down! There's something I need. Equalized. These are not common criminals. I can handle myself. All right, but if you get shot, I'll kill you. If I end up in jail, you both are breaking me out. You know we can. Going up against guys like this. Watch your back. Maybe you can't get a list of no associates. What else do you want? His pants size and his favorite ice cream? No, his shoe size and his favorite color. Okay, okay. Oh, hi. Hero, your legend is growing. Am I just supposed to make small talk like you're not gonna spend your day going Jessica Jones on bad guys? I have done what I can to keep people safe. It's okay, we're the good guys. And I've done my best to keep my family safe. Maybe the world does need you. It's what I was put on this earth to do. And I'm not stopping. Hi, my name is Gil Robertson, president of the African American Film Critics Association. Today we have a real treat for you as we are talking to uh, Tori Kittles and Joe Wilson, uh, an actor and also one of the uh, creative executives for the popular uh, CBS series, The Equalizer. We're gonna kick things off by introducing you to the African members who are on the call today, starting with Kim Singleton in New York, Dana Abercrombie in New York, Nancy Green in Baltimore, and Ruben Regal in Miami. I wanna let you guys do what you do so well and I will see you on the other side. Um, I absolutely adore this show. Um, Tony, um, I mean, Tori, I love your character, Dante, because he is someone who's trying to change a flawed police system from the inside, but yet, in one of the episodes, uh, his character was still racial profile. Um, talk to us about he, how emotional that may have been for you. Being a black man in America, I'm sure either you've been stopped or someone close to you has been stopped. And for Joe, could you talk to us about what kind of feedback you may have received from you know highlighting this topic in that episode? Uh, um, well, first, let me say thank you to everybody here today for taking the time to be here to talk about these stories and to continue to illuminate the conversations that need to be had about these stories. Um, you know, I don't think there's a black man in America who hasn't had an experience. I've had, you know, multiple and, and people I know have had, had multiple. I think when you are approaching it from a story perspective though, it always begins with the script. Um, it does for me anyway. And, and, you know, Joe Wilson came to me on hiatus last season and said, I had this idea and he really wanted to dig into this. And he was so passionate about it because he'd had his own experiences. Um, and so, you know, Dante as a, as a character in general, the way Joe and, and our writers, Terry and Andrew and everybody in the writer's room have set him up to be being inside the system, trying to make a change. How do you do that? with all of these outlying forces. And, I, and when I say out, you know, lying forces, I mean the forces of racism that we all deal with on a daily basis. And it's something that it never goes away. You know, you, you walk out the door and, 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 it's, and it's there. But I think what, we've, what we're seeing right now in, in our storytelling with this show in particular is a new ability to actually tell these stories in a grand way. You know, and I think that our hats have to go off to everybody at CBS and, and NBCU for getting behind it and supporting Joe and myself and Queen and, and all of us to be able to tell these types of stories. To echo what, what Tori just said, um, you know, the support was just off the meter. And the first thing Tori said to me when I came to him with the idea was, they're never gonna let us do it. You know, they're, they're never gonna let us go this far. And we said we had to try. Um, you know, to answer, you know, the original question, the response has been amazing. You know, um, my phone 
constantly blowing up. You know, the feedback has been incredible. You know, there's a few trolls out there. Now, why are they you know, still, why do they keep telling this story? You know, um, because it's necessary. You know, it is absolutely necessary because it's still happening. You know, <laughs> Tori knows this. Two days before the episode aired, I was pulled off my boat at gunpoint by the police, racially profiled. Two, I was literally posting about the episode airing on social media, and I had a gun pointed at me moments later. And so this is why we tell the stories, because it's happening. It's um, ironic, you know, that usually, usually you get to express yourself through your art and, and tell the story. It happened in the reverse way this time. Tell the story, and then it happened. So, you know, we have a responsibility, and um, we're going to keep the fight up, and, you know, because we have to. You know, sometimes, you know, people don't want to hear the truth, but, you know, they need to hear the truth. And, you know, the, the studio network, they've supported us in that. And I think, you know, to, to add to that, one of the things that Equalizer has been able to do, and I think this is, you know, speaks to, again, to our writers, our producers, our whole team, is, is the ability to educate, entertain, and inspire. Like when, it's, when stories can do all of those things, and they don't, they're not mutually exclusive sometimes, but when you can do all of those things well, which I think, you know, is a credit to our team, then you can, you see what's happening right now. The, these stories are resonating in such a major way all across the nation. Hello, Dana Abercrombie from The Coalition. Um, I wanted to touch a bit upon the, the previous episode that we just saw. What was really interesting was that it was said that you wanted to maintain the innocence of your children before you had that conversation that would kind of, I don't want to say like, but would change their perspective on policing and especially what you do as being a cop. My question is, with everything that happened within this episode, will we touch upon the kids' perspective to learn more about what they think and the what happened with their father? I think that's a, that's a question for the, the writers, um, you know, as far as how far we'll dig into that. I, I can't give any way any, any spoilers, but I know that the conversation will continue in what way I'll leave, I'll leave that one to Joe. Absolutely. Um, it, just a little background, you know, I'm a, I'm a father, I have two children, you know, so I see a lot of myself, and I've got two boys, and I see a lot of myself in the Dante character. And a lot of that comes from, you know, in our community, we have the talk, you know, with, with our kids, and we mentioned in the episode, we didn't go into it, but if you know what it is, you know, and, you know, we broke it down. And unfortunately, I had to have that talk with my two boys, at an early age, because I need them to survive, you know, so you're robbing them of innocence, in a sense, and you hate to do it, but you'd hate it even more if they didn't come home, if they didn't have the tools to operate out in the world. So with that, you know, Dante, as a Black cop, as a Black father, you know, there's a duality there, and he's fighting it from both sides. He's trying to change the game from the inside, he's catching heat from the outside, and he's in a tough spot. And so now his children have been you know, shielded from that because he didn't want to rob them of that innocence. And so you heard the son say, you know, I hate the cops, mommy, and that, you know, it's now it's, it's thrown in his face and he's getting it hard, hard and upfront real quick. And so now Dante's going to have to have that talk. Dante's going to have to discuss what happened. And yes, we're going to dive into it. You know, when we're going to do it, don't know, but we will see, you know, the effect of that conversation. We will see how they react to that. We will see in the future, I mean, it's, it's necessary. That this story is not done. We have to continue to see the ripple effects of it. Hi, Nancy Green from Film Critique. One of the things that I really liked about this episode was the fact that there's such a sense of relief when everything comes to the conclusion. And I wanted to know, are you aware of that in acting in the show and, and all the writing and everything that goes into the show? Because for me, it's different than the relief that you feel like when the good guys win. It's it's really difficult to explain. And I wanted to know if you can kind of speak to that uh, relief that black people feel when these things that we see in fiction kind of come out differently than they might in real life. I think it's hope, right? You know, we, we see these situations happen on a daily basis and we see them in very badly. And I think it speaks to our human nature to want the best outcome always, you know, for all people. Um, in storytelling, we can do that, you know, um, we can we can give you that that hopeful outcome, 
whereas you may not get it in the world. Um, in, in terms of me looking at it from a performance perspective, I never played the ending. You know, I play, I play the truth of what's on the page. Um, so, and I try to stay in the moment. With this episode in particular, we were, you know, it, it was very personal. You know, um, I've spoken to Joe about this. Um, I, you know, I, I, I had, it brought back really vivid images as a child and, and my uncle coming home, he'd had a run in with the law and he was bruised and battered. And I remember that one instance completely changing his perspective on the world. You know, it, it completely changed him and it completely affected, you know, not only him, but his kids and, and all of us that were around him. And it was something he wore with all of his life, you know, in storytelling, you know, we can take that situation and go, well, what if this would have changed, then this outcome would have changed. Because all of these things, as Joe said, is a, there are ripple effects, you know, like one thing affects the next thing, affects the next thing, and so on and so on. And so we continue to see these cycles perpetuate themselves based on decisions that we continue to make. So in storytelling, we can say, you know what? Well, if we do this this way, if we approach it this way, we may get to that hopeful outcome. And so in doing that, in telling these stories, you know, hopefully we inspire more empathy so that we will eventually get to that outcome. To touch upon the, just the relief I think you're feeling like our job on the show is to highlight social injustice. And, you know, we, I, I feel we do a, a really good job of that. You know, we want to shine a light, you know, we can't always solve the problem, but we want to shine a light on it and bring it. Hey, if you're not aware of this, this is how people feel. This is what people are going through. You know, like, Doc, uh, like Tori said, um, create empathy. But I feel like you felt that relief in this episode because it was so close to home. I got so many calls and social media, you know, everyone was triggered when they saw this, you know, because either they've been through it, you know, I've been through it, Tori's been through it, or they know someone close to them who's been through it. You, you'd be hard pressed to find, you know, someone black in America who doesn't know someone this has happened to. And so I think, you know, it resonated. And that's the relief you're feeling when, you know, when Dante, you know, kills the officer at the end, you, that's years and years of pent up frustration, you know, where, okay, he gets to defend himself and he goes as far as he does because there's so much frustration. And that was the relief. Like we wish, you know, <laughs> it could have gone the other way very easily. So, and that's the story that we're used to seeing. So the relief is okay. He was okay. Yes, very much. Thank you. Exactly. Hi, Tori. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Tori. Yo. I'm Ruben from Miami, the Galegas. One of the coolest things that has happen, happened in the, la the past 10 years, I, probably, is the race of women in strong action characters. Uh, what do you guys think about like, bringing the equalizer as a female character uh, in contrast with the, the character that we know first on the show and then with Denzel on, in films, and now we have Queen Latifah representing this uh, amazing character there? I grew up and I love. I can tell you how I felt when I first got sent the script and I saw that Queen Latifah was attached to it. I was I was so excited. I didn't read the script. I just said, I'm doing this, you know, I'm doing this because she's involved in it. Like I, I've had the good fortune, the great fortune to work with her. This is the third time we've worked together. We, we, we worked together on Bessie. We worked together on Still Magnolias uh, a few years back. And she's the perfect person for this. She embodies such strength and intelligence and beauty and just her whole presence. She's magnificent. So for me, it was like, yeah, of course, this is exactly what we need out in the universe right now at this moment. Yo. The, the same thing. They came to me with it. I got what? The equal queen let's see. Oh, I'm in. You know, I, I didn't need to hear anything else. And um, you know, she's been such an icon you know, for so long. And, you know, just, I've never seen someone light up a room in a screen the way she does. It's, it's, it, when you say someone has it, she has it. And then you combine that with what we get to do on the show and what the, the goal is, you know, it was, it, it, it was a no brainer. It was a no brainer. And we need to see <laughs> more of it. You know, men, we, we need to move out the way and let the ladies do their thing. Things will be a much better things will be in a much better place. I agree. Thank you so much. 
Katia Woods, Cup of Soul Show in the Philadelphia Tribune. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting is that we don't often talk, I think, enough about in this policing aspect of it is that even though a black man can wear the uniform, he's not extended the professional courtesy as if he were white. And, um, and it's always been one of the complexing things, I think, to me that, you know, black men that are police officers don't speak up more about the injustices and the things that they are seeing from their white counterparts. Um, what was it like for you to kind of like examine that aspect of it? Because I think, you know, when we first encounter everything, we, we see him saying he's a police officer, but they're not tuning into that. That doesn't even walk into their realm of thinking that this man could be on the job or could be a colleague. Blackness precedes you no matter what field you are in. And, and you know, it's just the way, it's the way the world is. And he's in this, in this sort of, I would say conundrum because not only is he a black man, he's actually an upright moral guy trying to do the right thing in a system that's not always morally upright. Um, and so to try to navigate that, Joe spoke to him, there's a duality in Dante and how he has to exist. I think that, you know, we can all talk about how you get along in the world and the code switching that goes on with this or that and how you sort of have to navigate certain situations to get to where you want to go. Um, and I think that that's Dante's dilemma throughout last season going into this season and specifically this episode where he doesn't even get to get out of his mouth that he's a cop. You know, he just knows his rights. And that's also knowing your rights is also an infuriating thing for people sometimes, you know, especially racist people because they go, wait, you know, shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? How many times have we all been told, hey, yo, shut up? But he knows his rights and he speaks to those rights. And because he speaks to those rights, the situation escalates, you know, and and it happens so quickly. And we've seen this. It happens so quickly. The judgment is made not based on who you are, but based on just your skin color alone. That those those split second decisions are made. And so it's a complex role that Dante Dante is one of the most complex characters I played and Joe you know infuses such nuance in things where he doesn't respond to things you know sometimes um not responding is is as big of a response as responding in certain situations you know Dante when he's dealing with people within the precinct you you see uh, it was an episode last season where he sort of yelled and screamed that everybody in the precinct was involved with letting this information go that he he wanted he, he had made a promise to the parents of these children who came forward and testified and that promise was broken because of leaked information and so it's who do you trust within this precinct and so he's dealing with a lot you know there's a lot of complexity going on in, in, in his particular you know in his character and his storytelling and which I, makes it fun to play because there's always somewhere to go there's always something new to explore Absolutely. Dante's not afraid to, to make waves. Um, this episode in particular, is something you touched on, like it, it is very nuanced. And, you know, we're talking about in, inherent bias that, you know, comes with, you know, the job. And so Dante's approached, you know, by the police. He, he could have in the car said, I'm a cop, you know, but the big part of it is because of his experience as a black man, he shouldn't have to, you know, the exhaustion of that. He's like, really, this, he gives the cop the chance. Hey, I'm not who you're looking for. That was his opportunity to slow down and really mm -hmm. think. And he go and he, he continues, he escalates, pulls him out the car. Dante knows his rights and you, you can hear it in what he's saying. You know, he's trying to give him a chance, but now his experience as a black man is coming out. I shouldn't have to go through this. But then he's already planning. And then, like you said, it happens so fast, he can't even get it out of his mouth and boom, we're off to the races. So what I loved about the script too, that there was a, it was a descriptive line where, you know, uh, the scene was written and set up and all the dialogue was being said. And then Joe wrote in the description, why doesn't he explain who he is? 
he should not have to. And that was on the script. And it told me everything I needed to know about that scene. Also, everything that's reflective of our collective experience. And it was just, I, I was like, oh, this is, this, is, this is deeper than, this is really deep what we're doing right now. And I felt so proud to be a part of it. Yeah, you know, and, you know, it, it was a great, great collective experience, you know, you know, our whole team and Tori just murdered this role. I mean, it was incredible. It was incredible. It was incredible to watch. Thank you. But as I always say, if I'm ever good, it begins with the writing. Mm. So. See, that's the type of love we have on our show right there. <laughs> true. True, team, true team effort. True. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, this is Rhonda, apologies. Um, where does Dante stand with his feelings in regards to his father? I think, I, I mean, after this experience in particular. His feelings with his father, I think they have a lot to work through. Um, it's a lot of history, but that history in one way before this episode, he thought was something negative in a lot of ways, you know, and the aspect of his father being in prison because of some of the acts that he's committed. And that's a burden on Dante's shoulders, especially in the eyes of law enforcement, that his father is or went to prison for being a corrupt cop. And so not only does he have to deal with that, he has to deal with the lessons of his, his father being a more abrupt, a more matter of fact, the more like fight, the more stand up, you know, whereas his mother's like, hey, look for the empathy in people. And that's sort of a conflict that he constantly has within him. And in this episode though, you got to see how both of those things can be true. Both of those things you need sometimes to survive. And the, the trick is, I guess, figuring out when to use which one, but you need them all to survive. And I think he appreciates his father coming out of this episode, he appreciates his father in a way that he may not have for the last few years of his life because he was holding on to the resentment of his father making bad decisions and his father bringing down, you know, this horrible cloud over his family. It's complicated. You know, everything Tori just said is very, very complicated. And just like in life, you know, things aren't just black and white. You know, he's had a interesting relationship, like he said, you know, with his father. He's been in judgment of his father for so long. And like his mother said in this episode, you know, your father did some bad things, but he wasn't a bad man, you know, and, you know, you got to find the good in people. And Dante had to you utilize all the tools in his arsenal from his mom, from his dad to survive, you know, in that scenario. And what did he end up falling back on was his father's philosophy to survive, you know, and part of what drives Dante is he was running, his, his mother said, you've been running from who that man was your whole life. And so now Dante has to figure out, is he being a cop for the right reasons? Is it because he wants to fight injustice or is he want, does he want to prove his father wrong? You know, and so he leaves the force and now he's got to figure that out, you know, so it's, it's very complicated. And, you know, I think you get the better stories and you get better drama when there are no answers, there are more questions. And so that's what we're trying to do. And, you know, you got to keep watching to see where it goes. Thank you. Yeah, I felt that like, um, you know, how like a lot of times with our parents, we don't know in the moment that they're really giving us tools for survival and that their harshness is out of love. And I think that during this process, that's what Dante showed. That also goes back to the reluctance of his, his reluctance to have that conversation with his own kids. You know, the conversations that were had with him, you know, by his father and his mother and how they've affected him and, and you know, wanting to keep that innocence alive just a little bit longer just a little bit longer, knowing that in the back of your mind, you always, you have to prepare them for the world, but just wanting to hold on to a little bit more innocence because I think Dante feels like his innocence was stripped away by his father. Absolutely. And we even said, he, Dante didn't want his kids to look at him like he looked at his father. So mm -hmm. and. Hi, Kim Singleton again. Um, I'm a huge fan of action movies, action programs. And even though, um, Queen Latifah does most of the heavy lifting when it comes to kicking people's butt in the show. Tori, tell me, how do you prepare for the physically demanding aspects of your character? 
I go to Joe and I say, Joe, don't write <laughs> this particular scene. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, um, I, you know, I, I, I feel like fighting in, in storytelling, it has to make sense. What's the purpose of it? And in this case, the, the, in this episode, the fighting was very raw and rugged. And I really wanted to do everything. I wanted to do, make sure I did, you know, all the stunts and make sure I felt the elements because I felt it was important to what Dante was going on, what, what was going on with Dante throughout this whole episode and throughout this whole season. And the physical aspects, you know, I've, I've I'm sort of athletic. I've, you know, played sports. So this, you know, I can, I can, I can fake it. <laughs> I'm good enough to fake it. Um, <laughs> But I felt like there was something really primal that needed to be showed that hadn't been showed in Dante throughout this whole season. And, you know, to go back to what you were saying earlier about the, the, the release, there's a, there's a release that him fighting in that manner and him taking all of that aggression and that rage within him and unleashing it, you know, to survive was, was necessary. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, Slick, our incredible director who, who, um, you know, who helmed this episode. I wanted to make sure he didn't have to cut away. Like he could always just be there so you could see what he was going through, not just the physical aspects, but emotionally where he was. George being modest, um, you know, he's a monster in the gym. He takes care of himself, um, you know, eats right. He does everything that I, I'm supposed to do and I don't, um, but he's just that dedicated. And, you know, we have the, um, there were some grueling moments, and it reminds you, it's like five degrees or zero degrees outside. It's freezing, and he's out there without a coat on. Like when you see him climb out of the car, he's putting his hands in the on the ice and snow. And you know, we're like, you know, get that man a coat. Like in between takes, he's like, no, I'm good. We're like, you know, he's like, he doesn't want it. We're like, why? Because I need to feel it. I need to feel uncomfortable. I need to be uncomfortable so I can really bring it. And it's that type of, like, you couldn't even talk to Tori during the episode because he was just so in it. And we're like, nope, just give him the space because he's that dedicated and he really wanted to just bring bring the heat. And he did, you know, um, you know he just dove so deeply into the scenario. And I think it came across on screen. Like, he was going through this. He was not acting. This was happening. And so it was that sort of dedication that he showed him. And, you know, bravo, brother. I wanted to get it right for Joe. Like if you guys could have been on the pitch last season, after last season, when he called me and he said, I have this, this thing. And he was so specific and so passionate about, you know, what he wanted to say with it. I wanted to get it. I wanted to get it right for him. You know, I wanted to get it right for Queen always, you know, and all of our whole team of writers, Terry and Andrew, Deborah, Martin, Chase, Shaquem, we have, we have just an amazing team. So, you know, what I, ultimately kept coming back to is I don't want to act. I need to feel everything that's happening in this episode. It warranted, the script was, it was such a great script that it warranted all of that. It warranted anything that I did to, to make it happen, it, it warranted it. Wow, thank you, great job. Thank you. Hi, Dana, again, um, what I wanted to do, kind of touch a little bit upon what was previously said. Um, what was really important, I love the hallucinations. It gave us um, insight into the mindset of Dante a little bit. And so I was wondering, I know you can't spoil or say much, but can you tease or at least say, at the end of the episode, you know, he hands in his badge and he's going to go off and I, I'm going to assume kind of find and figure out things in his life. Can you say whether or not this will be the same Dante that we've seen before after this experience? Is his mindset completely different? Can you talk a little bit about the emotional side? I think surviving an experience like this changes you. And I absolutely think Dante has to change because of it. Um, but, you know, Oh, yeah, you're right. I, won't, I don't want to give you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, you know, these, these experience, this type of experience changes you. You know, there's obviously a certain amount of you, you, you survive this type of trauma. You carry it with you. And I think 
what will be interesting to see is how he deals with it. Yeah, it's, it's impossible to go through something like this and not be affected, you know, and, you know, we're, we're just a collection of our experiences and Dante is no different. Now, which way that's going to go, I can't tell you, but, you know. He could, but he won't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but we, we will see, you know, it's impossible to go through this and not be affected. I'll just say that. We'll see something. We'll something see, to be seen. Well, something will be seen. Thank you. Hi again. Um, I wanted to know, can you talk a bit about having uh, Jada Pinkett on the show and also um, the importance of having these powerful characters, um, you know, played by Queen Latifah, Tori, um, all of that on, on, um, on movies and television, especially right now? Well, I was so upset because I didn't get to work with her. You know, I've been a fan of, of, you know, Jada and her and Queen together going back to the days of Set It Off, like, which is a movie that inspired me. Um, their relationship and their own screen chemistry is, is, is incredible. So I, I did, I love the episode. And I thought that episode was particularly, it was really um, important because of the whole connection to, um, to Black Wall Street, you know, and reclaiming what's yours. Um, and so, you know, so I, the episode, I, I, I'm a fan of the show, like I'm on the show, but I'm also a fan of the show. Um, and so when we get to bring in people like, you know, Jada and, uh, you know, Rick Ross came, um, you know, for an episode, we had Ron Canada in this particular episode, um, oh, who, who is amazing. And I was an extra 25 years ago in a movie that Ron Canada was in and I went up to him and I asked him, how do you become an actor? And he said, you should be reading a play a week. And so I started reading a play a week and then I would read two plays a week and then three plays a week. And then, and so when I saw his name pop up on the call sheet, I was like, oh, I gotta go see him. I gotta go see him. So he was working shooting this scene, which is a wonderful scene because he's an incredible actor. And, uh, and after he finished the scene, you know, I went to see him and I said, do you remember me? I said, I read those plays. And he put this huge smile on his face and he hugged me and then he just started tearing up and then I started tearing up. And it was just one of those full circle moments that this show continues to like bring about where you just, you run into so many incredible, incredible people who have been in this business, who've actually, you know, some of the reasons why we're able to do these types of stories now, we keep bringing these people in. We have, you know, you look at Lorraine Toussaint, you know, like just such a body of work and just such a powerhouse actor, you know, like I, I just feel so blessed to be able to be a part of this cast and be on this show. I'm sorry, I segued into multiple things. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> no, um, just to, you know, to piggyback on that, representation matters, you know. Um, one, we have an opportunity on the show, you know, you know, Queen Latifah, her, you know, her career is, spans just so much that, you know, her and Jada are like really, really good friends. And when we got the opportunity to bring her on, it was, you know, it was a hard deal to make because Jada's a little busy, you know, but, you know, we got it done and she came in and crushed it. And I think that chemistry that they have in real life showed on screen, you know, it was fun, but to have all these amazing women, you know, you know, with the badassery and kicking ass, you know, uh, Queen Jada, Lisa on the show, like they handled that. I think it's important to show that and showcase that. And, you know, we want to keep doing it. You know, our job is to entertain, but we want to keep pushing. We want to keep going to the edge, pushing that envelope and just making it more dynamic, more dynamic. And I'm looking forward to pushing it even further uh, coming up. You know, they, they were, that, that chemistry on screen was amazing, amazing to watch. And it was fun. And they, they had a good time doing it. And I'm sorry you couldn't see it, Tor. You couldn't be there. Yeah, I know. I know. I saw it on screen. <laughs> it was a good time. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yes. And I was actually an extra also on uh, one of Queen Latifah's movies when I was younger. And she just has like this energy. She was working to keep everybody awake and upbeat. And it was it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, I, I love hearing all of this. It's great. Yeah, she's still, she makes everybody better. Yeah, she really does. There's like very few people that are in the industry. Like she just radiates this light and 
it affects, it permeates the whole set, everybody, the crew, the actors that come in, you know, she does, she truly makes everybody better. She's the heartbeat, you know, she's the engine, but she's also the heartbeat. It's, it's, it's stunning to watch. Nice, nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, Aish, again. Um, in the last years, we have seen uh, the race of remakes and prequels, sequels, and, you know, the whole thing. Do you think, do you guys think that Hollywood is running out of ideas because Dick what I said is back with uh, a, a different, you know, like aura. And we have seen many shows coming back and going like, like Wonder Years, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think it's about running for ideas or new storytelling to say it with the same background? I don't think it's a, oh, go ahead, John. Uh, let me just say real quick. There are millions of ideas out there, so the industry's not running out of, uh, running out of ideas. Um, but it is a business, and they know what works. <clears throat> and you know, it's smart business to you know to go to a proven commodity. And okay, how can we look at this different? How can we come at this from a different angle? And you know, I, I think that's working. You know, the, the equalizer has been you know dominated by male characters in the past. Times are changing. Let's bring in Queen Latifah. Oh my God! Now look at it. You know, it's just a different. It's a different. And I won't say better, but it's you know a different angle we can approach this with, and it becomes new. You know, so you're just taking a foundation of something that you know we're familiar with, but let's put a new spin on it. So it's the same, but it's also very, very different. Tori, right. yeah, no, I I agree with that. And the thing about it is, you 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 hear about the stories that get made. You know, you don't hear about the stories that that don't. Um, you know, there's a reason why the equalizer resonates, you know what I mean? I think we, we love justice, you know, so the operating within the framework of that, you know, sure, it's a title that everybody knows, but it's a brand new spin because it's Queen Latifah and you get to dive into areas more so like the home life, you know what I mean? And you get to introduce, you know, her being a parent, which the other equalizers, you know, they never dealt with. Um, so I think the world is rich. And so that's what people are resonating with. And then you, you know, you have somebody like, you know, Queen doing it or have the Queen, not somebody like, just have her doing it. That's what makes it more interesting. Thank you. So yeah, the title's the same, but it's it's totally it's brand new. No, that that that's what I meant. Because when you see a show like this, it's nothing like like the movies, even even it's, it's nothing like the first character. Like you say, this character is a party, it's a it's a different. Mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a different aura but sometimes it feels like bringing back these shows like you know the new pillar uh wonder years etc etc it's like okay why would we bring it this way we actually have something new absolutely i think it's also too it's important to like recognize that the shows that we grew up on that we loved you know that sort of went away there's a whole new generation of people that come behind us that that aren't they aren't familiar with those shows you know we get to a certain age and we're like, oh, I've seen that, I've seen that, but the new generation haven't, you know what I mean? And so if that show was great for us and why wouldn't it be great for them, you know, with some new aspects, you know, some new sprinkles, you know, thrown in there. So, you know, I think, I think whatever the, like Joe said, the business of it is the business and they know what works. And so if you can be creative within those structures, you know, then it's, it's a win-win for everyone. Um, one of the things that I do like about this episode is it does make you question like, you know, can we actually work within a system, as you stated, Tori, that isn't really set up for us? You know, what is, is there hope for us to work in an environment for change when the foundation is rotten? You know what I mean? And how do we how do we navigate that? I think that's the question for, for all of us. And I think that's the question your character is like asking himself as he's working through, you know, as we see him, but we don't know what he's going to do. But I'm saying that's what I'm thinking as I'm looking at him, like it's kind of hit him, like, you know, everything that he's tried to do, everything that he thought he was and what could be maybe just isn't there. Is that something that you're examining, Joe? Because I think that's the question we're asking us ourselves, a lot of us, as we're examining um, how do we 
fix this justice system, policing, and all these other things? You know, are we really just kind of like deluding ourselves? I, I think, and, and you hit it on the head, and that's exactly what Dante's dealing with. Um, you know, and without giving spoilers, um, we have to continue to fight. You know, if we knew the outcome, you know, things would be easy, you know, in life. And, you know, we have to have hope. We have to have confidence that we can make a difference. And we have to continue the fight. You know, I mentioned earlier, you know, we'll, a lot of times we'll come out with more questions than we have answers. And that's what makes things go. But we have to continue to fight. We have to believe that we can make a difference. We have to continue to take risks and put ourselves on the line. And we don't know what the answer is. We don't know what the outcome is. But if we don't continue to fight, nothing will happen. Nothing will change. And so, you know, real revolution comes from, you know, taking risk. And we have to put ourselves out there and we have to try, you know, and, you know, it's a fight and we're going to continue to fight. Yeah. You know, I think the short answer to your question is, yes, we can change things. I mean, but change happens very slowly, as we know, you know. But look at where we are now as a people and look at what's happening right now, even as we speak. Confirmation hearings of the first black woman Supreme Court justice. That's real change that we're seeing in our lifetime. Barack Obama, the first black president. That was real change. And it's easy to get delusion with, you know, the politics of things and, and the hopelessness of things. But positivity in in people and what we're capable of, especially collectively, when we get together and decide something is so powerful. It's just easy to go to the negative. So I think, you know, looking at where we've come from, where we are now, I think the future is very bright. I think the future is very bright. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about that. You know, I, I do believe that because we are seeing it. I think our generation right now, we we're see, we've seen so many advancements in the last 20 years. Now, that doesn't mean that we have everything that we need, but it definitely means that we have the steps to, to, to keep building you know, and keep just laying down. The foundation has been there for us for a while. So we're just continuing to build the house. It's a process. It's a, it's process. a process. Hey, I just wanted to piggyback a little bit on Ruben because um, I feel that we're in a different time. So even though these things are being rebooted, we're telling stories that weren't possible when, when like the first equalizer was on and also. So I don't know if you want to comment on that, Joe. I think it's exactly what, you know, Kathia just, you know, brought up, you know, it's a different time, you know, things have changed, just like Tori said. And so what, there's no way we could have got away with this episode years ago, but now, you know, the studio network, you know, and our amazing EP team, you know, they backed us on it, you know, let's push the envelope, you know, the equalizer was just fighting crime before, but now it's about social injustice. And so, you know, these, you know, I can't speak to the other reboots, but we're, it's, a, it's the same name, but it's, this is a totally different show. And what we're getting to do, what we're getting to showcase, representation matters. You know, you have this Black woman kicking ass and doing what she's doing. It's important. Representation matters. And so, you know, I, I don't know if I'm answering the question, but it's, it's, it's a different show and it's important in what we're doing. It's, it's making a difference. Okay, now what I really want to know is where Dante is going in his love life because he seems to be in a bit of a, like his wife may still, he may still have some feelings for the wife. And then there's Robin over here. So what's really going on? Obviously there's chemistry between Dante and McCall, Dante and Robin, they have a thing. Um, I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> but I mean, you know, so in this episode we see several hallucinations and you know, I dare to say that last scene when he was dying uh, it was more of a fantasy, you know, and, you know, he even said in the episode, you know, there, in his whole life, there's been so much noise, but when I'm with you, it's quiet, you know, and so she exists in a place where, you know, you've got his father over here and the way he does things and his mom over here, the way she does, and she's like right there in the middle and there's a vibe. Now, you know, I'm going to stop there too, I, you know. You got to continue to tune in and see where we go with it. But when he was in that dire situation, that's where his mind went to, that happy place. That, that's where he felt safe. 
So what comes out of it, you know, we gotta we gotta keep, you know, the pen moving. Well, thank you guys. I actually live tweet the show. So. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, thank you, Tori and Joe. Thank you so much for your time this morning. We really, really, really enjoyed the show, which is why it was our pick for best new show of uh, last year uh, for Africa TV honors. And so we're looking forward to seeing uh, more of it and more of you uh, as the series continues. On behalf of the world's largest group of Black critics, thank you for watching this episode of Africa Roundtables. Have a great day. Thank you.